27. Okay. Is it touching? 18. 27 inches. So we have nine inches of articulation? I guess. Over the edge, feel like I'm floating through the air. The pain I felt is painful, all is said and done. Hello and thanks for tuning in. This episode is all about a simple modification that will increase wheel articulation in the midsize Honda platform. My guess is this modification may have been done before or can be applied to other all-wheel drive platforms like Subaru, Toyota Crossover, and Jeep Crossover, etc. I've mentioned many times on my channel that a unibody all-wheel drive crossover is not going to compete with a body-on-frame four-wheel drive, especially with solid axles. If you want to primarily go off-road or off-road competitively, then you're going to want to buy a true four-wheel drive. This Honda Ridgeline you see here is going to make a good overlander. There is so much time spent on-road overlanding in the USA. The daily drivability aspect is so important. Giving a vehicle like the midsize Hondas with a ZF9 transmission, extra articulation, and also the brake aid line lock system or balls, it makes it a pretty solid choice for overlanding. So here's my 2019 Honda Passport. When it was only a year old, it had a two inch lift, but here's where it was still connected. There you go. Stock, the Honda Passport, handle like most all-wheel drives. There's not much flex. Now check this out. Disconnected rear sway bar, I-box springs on all four, and strut shock extenders on all four. I'm also rocking the three and a half inch tracks to lift kit. So far, I haven't had a wheel go up in the air. So now it's a good time to talk about modifications because it's not just the flex mod by itself. So first I have a three and a half inch tracks to lift kit. This kit includes a one inch subframe drop. So the geometry of the drivetrain is still at a healthy angle. The next modification to talk about is going to be the rear sway bar delete. Generally speaking, a sway bar increases high speed lateral stability and decreases low speed off camber. You're gonna tip and roll over stability. I am not trying to convince you to disconnect your rear sway bar, but I do have to let you know that without disconnecting the rear sway bar, this modification really isn't gonna be as effective 
It might not even help at all, actually. Yeah, there you go. Whoops, I almost got through. I guess I got crossed up here, so I'm gonna back up and give it another try. If you haven't already, Please make sure to check out my original video about this, about uh, installing the iBox springs in the rear of my Honda Passport. I'll place a link in the video description. So you could already see, it's almost, uh, the travel is the same as if you didn't have a spacer at all on the top. But if you want to see the true heights, let's just stand them up. Sit down here then. Now when you stand them up, and we add this bad boy on here. That's exactly why you can't run a three a three inch spacer. That's what I tell people, and people are like, well, what if I, I'm like, no, just don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. You can't do it. Can you put that blade back on? Because that's part of it. Yeah, we have right. to chop these. Oh, okay. So it's a little higher. I see. Right there. Okay. And then there's gonna be a lot more spring rate, even though it's a little taller. That's why I'm thinking you're not going to get that much droop, but you're going to get way more um, uh -huh. up travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot so, more up travel. Yeah. Cool. I'm all for that. Especially since I have the preload spacer. Uh huh. It's going to be really noticeable for me. <laughs> this is going right. to be a much bigger change from what we did in the rear. Like yeah. Driving wise. I do notice the rear though. Yeah. I ran these springs with a 1.5 spacer on the top, but without the, the strut mod. Right. So that meant that this was like that. So this spring was a lot more compressed. The ride was horrible. The ride was really bad. Do you think it was worse than OEM? Oh, hell yeah. By yeah. The, yeah. That's exactly. And so, dude, Manuel, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. why I tell people spring, spring lifts suck. Yeah. <laughs> because yep. you just, you get less up travel. And then, I mean, you just lose wheel articulation. Yeah, so. so I think you are also losing a lot of up travel with with this as well um but obviously this was needed to make the right the height which, yeah that's which, a pre that's a preload spacer right? right okay which now has like my gears turning in my head uh -huh. what if you know as like a freebie mod someone used the ridgeline spring on a completely stock um passport strut with the strut extender since that spring's longer mm -hmm. like kind of like a more even more affordable option right right yeah i mean i don't know what the exact height would be but you know that would definitely be interesting huh. good stuff yeah. 37 and a half he said mm -hmm. so it's a little taller it might settle more right mm -hmm. okay and then back here should be 37. Yeah. Yeah, still 37. Still a 37, okay. So I'm just adding a little bit more um, to your current spacers to drop the suffering down just a little bit, just to kind of um, strain out the angle of the axle and also to kind of alleviate on all the other components like the, the slower control arm this uh, tie rod in. A total of four shims were added to the front subframe. And then another piece of the puzzle was longer sway bar end links. Those were needed to correct the geometry of the sway bar. Uh, with, before I had that installed, I noticed a degradation in driving dynamics and uh yeah after swapping out that 10 inch link for a 14 inch 
the Honda drove perfectly. So Manny is going to be the trail hero, the Honda trail hero. <laughs> <laughs> Manny's modifications, the flex mod, and also the ball system. That's all helping out here. And I want to say, this is difficult four-wheel drive terrain. It is not the kind of terrain you come across when you overland. All right, let's recap on the suspension setup. So the core of this whole thing is going to be the Traxxas three and a half inch lift kit, and that is because it has a one inch subframe drop, and then you know the strut spacers. The Traxxas three and a half inch lift kit comes with a three inch front strut spacer, so that will need to be reduced to a one and a half inch spacer. Because the Eibach springs have such a higher spring rate and the front didn't droop down as much, I ended up having to install, well, I didn't have to, but I preferred to not have any axle bind or any kind of vibration upon acceleration. So I had 0.2 inch front subframe shims installed in the front subframe around where the engine is. So it was only four spots. Next up is you'll need ridgeline strut shocks and spring components. If you have a ridgeline, obviously, you're set. But if you have a passport, like myself, or a pilot, then you will have to make a modification to the rear top hat hole. You're going to need to widen it just a little bit. Then there is the NA Performance strut shock extenders. That's going to be really important. And all this is going to pair with Eibach Pro Lift Springs. Make sure that your front sway bar end links are 14 inches and you should disconnect your rear sway bar or delete it. Otherwise, you're not going to get full advantage of this whole setup. If you carry about a thousand extra pounds of gear like myself, then you might want to get some Sumo coil spring helpers. I have two sets and that is going to help with spring rate in the rear. It in my opinion, it also helps with shock absorption. I find that my ride is a lot more comfortable with these SEMO spring 
coil spring helpers. At the beginning of this video, I said that other platforms could probably benefit from strut extenders. And I think this is the perfect case. This is the Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2, a very capable machine. Now, this is a beautiful, beautifully modified Jeep Grand Cherokee by my friend Dirty Fly Adventures, AKA Nick and Nancy. That front passenger tire is up in the air. And you saw that the rear passenger tire was at full tuck and the rear driver tire is, I guess that's the max droop right there. And uh, I think Nick would really, really benefit from strut extenders and longer springs or possibly a coilover system if it's available for this platform. As you can see here, there's a bit more droop with this modification installed. Now I know there's gonna be at least one person that's gonna bring up this subject of these custom coilovers, one size fits all. And that is a big, big no. The quality, the R&D just isn't there. I've, I have friends that have installed these kits and it's a nightmare. There's loud clanking noises, early failures. Once we get big names like Icon, Ibok, Ibok makes the springs, but once they come up with a coilover kit, I know I'm gonna be able to trust that brand. And uh, I'm not gonna gamble on these other, other kits. If OEM components are good enough for the Hart Rally team, because they are on totally stock suspension, and they're jumping their passport, which is gutted. So please don't try to jump your stock passport because uh, I'm sure the Heart Rally team has about hundreds and hundreds of pounds of weight reduction. If stock suspension is good enough for the Heart Rally team, then it's going to be good enough for me. And I simply, I just don't think that um, any anything out there available right now is going to be stronger and more robust than stock Honda OEM. By the way, the struts are made by ZF, the same makers of the transmission. Also, you have to think about how often you have to rebuild a coilover kit compared to just having to replace a strut. Um, there's less maintenance if you just use a you know OEM style strut. Also, repair and replacement is going to be much easier with an OEM strut or OEM style strut. Wait, 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 turn first, turn. All right, slow. Do you want to hit? Yeah. Okay. The slider's supposed to do right. <laughs> yeah. Slow. You're almost about to hit. You're going to hit one inch. There. Now it's on. Now it's on. You're barely on it, though. Like, if you didn't have that slider there, you would have cleared it. 
Wait, wait. And you're getting clear. You good? All right. Definitely didn't look as uh, menacing. That's, that's great. That's a big rock. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that is a big rock. You want to measure it? <laughs>